Greetings and welcome, my name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this video I'm going to be going over the new debugger that Game Maker Studio has released. It is now integrated into the IDE and it actually looks significantly different, but it functions about the same, but I'm going to be going over all of the functionality of it again here. So if you have already watched the other debugger I put out recently, then you'll probably be good to go after just a minute of this video, but if you haven't used the debugger much and you're now using the new one, this is where I'd recommend you start. So to activate the debugger, you press F6, and that will load up the debugger. And now it is just a tab, just like everything else in your game. So your game will start to run, and then all of this information is now available to you. You have the graph over here, which is giving you memory, FPS, and then the averages of those. You can view all the code that is in your game by going into this resource view clicking on the specific uh, event, and then you can see that it comes up inside of here. And if you pull this up here, you have a bunch of tabs, but the important ones that to the debugger are right over here. You have the variables, instances, others, and graphics. So let's go over these and how they work and why they're important. So the first couple ones are locals. So this is the local object that is running the code when you pause your game. So if I actually come up here and I press pause, you can see here that it goes directly to the code that it was on, that it was checking, and it actually has the local variable that was running it. So I have the script name, so it tells me exactly where it's at, the PC, and then I have the instance of the OBJ guard that's running it. So I can look at all of my built-in variables here, and I can see what it was doing and where it's at, which is fantastic. And then you also have globals. Now, if I press play here, this will pop back up, and you're gonna to wanna to turn on this button right here, this enable real-time debugging. This allows you to see everything that is happening in your game in real time as it is running. Now, right now I don't have any global, so it's hard to show this off, so why don't we actually go ahead and exit out of this, and let's put in a global variable so that you can get an idea. So if I say global var uh, hello equals true, and We'll say, hello, you gotta create it and then set it. We'll run the debugger again. And then we're gonna see that if we enable real-time updates, you can then see that global variable and the value that it has, which is really nice. It allows you to see everything there. And then the watch right here allows you to put in a specific variable and actually watch how it changes over the course of time. So if I pause the game and I type in, hello, it's actually gonna find that global variable, but you can do this for any variable of the objects that are running in your game. So this is very, very handy if you wanna watch how something changes over time. Now I'm gonna press play again, and we're gonna come over to instances. So instance, you can see here, you have instance, all instances, and selected instance. So if I pause the game, this is going to uh, stop and give us the information on the instance that is currently running, which is, again, kind of handy. You go back to local, it's kind of the same thing. They can be different, though. And then you come over to all instances, and this is everything that is running in your game at the, at the time. So if I show up my room here, you can see that I have, um, I've got walls in here, and I have my guard. Oop, don't want a path. And then you can see that this all instances it has all of those walls and the guard right here, and I can see every single thing about them if I want to. So this is a very handy portion of code in the debugger to look at. And then you have the selected instance. Now this only works while your game is paused. So if you come into your game, you need to press play, and then I pause it. Uh, if I click on my guard, you can see right here that it now has an object that I can look at, and I can see everything about that specific instance. So I can pause it at any time and then click on an instance in the game and get the information about that, which is very handy. Now, if we come into others and I press play once again, this is another way of profiling or looking at how your game is running. So if I click on start profiling, this is going to give me detailed information about call counts, time, and step percentage as things are running. And this is for my code right now, but you can even come into the engine code and take a look at all of the things that Game Maker Studio Engine is doing while your game is running 
and like how efficient it is, the call counts. So you can look at how things are running, how if they're running well, and if you need to kind of debug or fine tune your code to get better performance out of it. And then you can stop profiling right there. And buffers, if you're using them, goes right here. And you've got graphics for render states and surfaces that are in your game and textures. So you can see right here, these are the textures that are currently inside of my game that Game Maker Studio is rendering. And then you have the call stack over here, which if you start using a, uh, a function and you start using scripts, this call stack is going to say where it started and where it's at uh, during that call stack, which can be very useful because if you have scripts and functions calling each other, you can follow each one as it calls a new one and it adds to that stack so you can figure out exactly where things go wrong if they go wrong. And that is very handy as well. Uh, that's actually the debugger though. It is a new, new way of looking at it, but functionally it's still the same. You have the same data that you can grab from it. It still works exactly the same way. And it's important to note that if you come into the manual right now, this is of course the day that they updated it, and you search for that debugger, it is not going to have the new information about it yet. It's still gonna say that it actually looks something like this, which is the old debugger. I imagine this is going to get changed shortly, but just so you know, that still looks like that. But this is still kind of all the same. It explains what every single one of these does and how they work and why you might want to use them. So coming into here is still useful if you want to get more information about them. It tells you how to put in breakpoints and more like that. So it's very useful information and if you're confused about anything about the debugger, I encourage you to come in and look out here. If you have any questions about it, then feel free to leave a comment below or find me on Twitter. I'd love to help you out, have a conversation. Let me know what you think of the new debugger if you've used the old one. If you haven't used it at all, are you going to start using it now? It is extremely useful when you actually start having issues with your game or you just want to start fine-tuning your code. The debugger is very powerful and I would highly recommend you use it when you start really going towards a game or a program that you want to create in here. There's only so much that show debug messages and show message are going to do for you. Eventually, you'll need to start using the debugger and I encourage you to start doing that sooner rather than later so that when you need it, you know how to use it. So that's what I've got for you. As always, have fun making great games and I will talk to you later. If you'd like to support me more than just liking and subscribing to my channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon like all of the awesome people on the screen right now. They get to vote on upcoming tutorials and get one-on-one -on -one training sessions with me each month. Thank you very much and I will talk to you later. <laughs>